In this video, we'll talk about parameter estimation, which is another one of the main uses of mathematical modeling with differential equations and its application to science and engineering type fields. So a lot of times with modeling, with differential equations, and for engineering, science, chemistry, any of those places, we generally have a model for how systems should behave. So we know sort of how they should interact, what types of factors are in play with how different quantities change. We have an idea of all this. What we don't usually know is what the coefficient should be in that model to get the result that we actually see from the physical situation. And so the idea of parameter estimation is we know how the result should behave, but we don't know a coefficient. So if we get actual physical data as to what's happening with this thing in the real world, we can then figure out the best value of these coefficients or the best value of these parameters, depending on who you talk to, so that the model that we have fits really closely to the physical data that we're seeing then we can use it to predict future results when we have that parameter set from the beginning. So that's the idea of this process is taking actual physical data and then fitting coefficients in the equation to it to best describe how it's behaving. And this is actually used a lot in engineering type fields. We look at things like specific heat or conductivity parameters or drag coefficients. All of these things are generally found experimentally and the idea is we know what should happen in an ideal world. Let's write that model out and figure out what the best fit parameter is to fit what we're seeing and use that to give us a data for a coefficient for this thing that we can use in other experiments if we want. This is common for things like specific heat, conductivity, and drag coefficients. We'll see what this might mean in some context. Let's say we know that some object's surface temperature changes via Newton's law of cooling, which means that the rate of change of temperature is proportional to the difference between its temperature and the surrounding temperature. Now the main issue is it's proportional, but we don't know what this K value is. This would be something like you want to see what's happening to this object, you want to know what's going to happen over time, but you don't know what the heat transfer coefficient is for that object. The info we have here is that at T equals zero, we know the temperature of the object, and we measure that it's another temperature 10 minutes later. And I want to know when will the temperature reach 29.5? So it's like your wife or an object to cool, you want to figure out how long it's going to take for it's cool enough to touch or to put in a system or something like that. Let's see what we can do with this here. So this here is a first order linear equation. We don't know what k is, but k is a number. This will be first order linear, we can just see what happens. I can rewrite this as d capital T dt is negative k times t plus k times the surrounding temperature. And I can solve this out dt dt plus k times t equals k times ts. And I can solve this. My integrating factor is going to be mu of t is e to the k times little t, because this function here will be little k integrated to kt. This means that the left hand side will become e to the little k t times capital T prime with the product rule equals k times ts times e to the kt. I can integrate both sides. e to the kt times t is ts times e to the kt plus c, and then divide through by e to the kt. So my function is going to be surrounding temperature plus c e to the minus kt. And now here I have two points of data. Right? I have that the temperature at t equals zero is 37, and the temperature after 10 minutes is 32. This seems like a problem, but I have two unknown cons in my problem. I don't know C from the initial condition, and I don't know K as to how this temperature will change over time. So if I plug in this first value for 37 at T equals zero, that's gonna make this term go away and make me happy. So at T equals zero, 37 should equal T of zero, which is the surrounding temperature, which is 20, plus C, so that tells me C is 17, and now I can use my second value to determine what k is supposed to be. So after 10 minutes, I will have that the temperature should be 32, but that's gonna be 20 plus 17 e to the minus k times t, which is 10. I can use the info now to solve for k. So I will have that 12 should equal 17 e to the minus 10 k. 12 over 17 equals e to the minus 10k, take the log of both sides, natural log of 12 over 17 is negative 10k, 
which means k should be 1 10th log of 17 over 12. I flip the log over when I put the minus sign in there. So therefore, my final expression for t as a function of time is going to be 20 plus 17 e to the negative 1 10th, time, it'll be times t, so put the t up top here, natural log of 17 over 12. You put the minus sign back if you want to flip that log over, but either way is fine. And now I can actually go about the problem because now I have this value of k, I have everything I need, this is the actual function. I can now solve for the question of when is t equaling 29.5. I can just plug that in and try to solve it out. So 29.5 equals 20 plus 17 e to the minus t over 10 log of 17 over 12. And we can solve for t. It's going to be unpleasant. The numbers aren't going to work out great. Move the 20 over, divide by 17. I'll get 9.5 over 17 is e to the negative t over 10 log of 17 over 12. This is 19 over 34, just make things look a little bit nicer. Get the log of both sides, and then I can solve for t, which comes out to about 16.71 minutes. But again, this answer here is totally fine. That's the idea of these sorts of problems. The idea of the simple version is that you're given two pieces of data, one for initial condition and one for this parameter, and you can solve for what k has to be to make this all work. There is a more involved version of this that's more complicated and involves actual coding to make this work that involves actually best fitting parameters here. So the next example, we'll talk about that, which involves drag coefficients. So the idea here is that we know that an object falling in free fall accelerates due to gravity and has a drag coefficient. We assume the drag force is proportional to the square of the velocity, so we get this alpha constant in here for that proportionality. I want to figure out what alpha needs to be to make this work. But now instead of having exactly two points of data, say a zero and a first point, we have a whole list of data here. So I want to figure out what value of alpha best fits this collection of data here. It's not going to be solving for a single value, but it's a best fit approximation. This is not something that can be done by hand. So we're going to turn to our good friend MATLAB to help us out. So in MATLAB here, we can see code that'll do what we want to do. The basic idea of this is I want to figure out the difference between the data that I get and the solution for a value of alpha and minimize that over all possible values of alpha. Let's look at this estimated squared error function first to go through it and see what that does and then back up to this part here. Here's this function here. It's going to compute the error between using the input value of a as the value in the equation which means the error between the solution you get using that value of a and the data that you're given. So here what we have is writing the function of the differential equation. We solve that numerically using ODE 45, and then we evaluate that at the t values that we give it. So we're going to give it a set of t values to say, here are the t values in the problem. And if you think back to the problem we had, we had a list of t values and a list of v values. The t values are going to be the input time values with a v for the velocities. So we'll evaluate that solution this thing that we find here, at the t values. And then our error is just going to be the sum of squares of this between our test v values and our values that we're given. So this error basically says, how far off were you from the solution at all these different points if you picked that single value of a? Then we look back up here. What the code's going to do, take in the t values, take in the v values, and then run it through and say, give me the value of a that minimizes this problem. Basically, I want it to minimize the function, error function, over all possible values of a between 0 and 4, and see what that does. It should then spit out the value of a that minimizes this error here. You can do that, and Matlab spits out the answer. Matlab here is telling us that the best a value, I'll be to write that on the page and we'll go back to in a second, is a equals 0 0.1256. So that is the value of a for the coefficient in the equation that best fits this data that we're given here. And the resulting error was 0 0.0345. What's that saying here? So we're saying that if I want to best fit this data here, I should pick this value for the alpha that shows up in my equation. So that whatever object I'm dropping, I should now take this to be the drag coefficient for anything I want to do forward with this object. So the idea of doing this estimation is that I can then take this a value 
and go do other experiments that need this drag coefficient, but now I have it and I know this object has that drag coefficient because that's the one that best fits this data. What you'll notice here though is that there's still an error even with that value of a. And that's partially because in the real world and for this data that I made up for this, I introduced noise into the data. The data is never going to be completely and absolutely accurate, and that's just the nature of measuring data. You're estimating things on a ruler, you're off by a little bit because you're estimating where it is on the ruler. Scales have tolerances, everything has a tolerance to it, which is the amount of error that it has, and so your data is not going to be exact every time. It should be pretty close, but it's not going to be exact. And so the noise means you really can't just pick one of these values and assume it's right forever because you might not get the best value. This basically takes an average of the best values you would get for all these different values and puts them all together to give you one single value that you could use as the coefficient in this case. So that's the idea of parameter estimation and what it might look like. It's something that you'll see probably now and again in future science engineering courses where it's usually how these coefficients are determined for different types of objects. When you don't know what to do with something, you can analyze it using a differential equation model to try to figure out what sort of properties it has based on what coefficients best fit the physical data you are seeing for that object in a variety of physical circumstances.